Hello. In the traditional motion picture story, the villains are usually defeated. The ending is a happy one. I can make no such promise for the picture you're about to watch. This is a story that stars two leaders, Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher. They became the most unlikely eco-warriors of all time, playing the leading roles in a largely forgotten drama that saved all life on Earth from disaster. To the luck of the human race. It all began with a good idea. In the 1920s, coolants in refrigerators were so toxic that a leak could kill you. So we invented safer chemicals to do the job, CFCs. The wonder chemicals of the 20th century. They were so versatile, people's lives were transformed. Fridges, air conditioners, aerosols, cleaners. We couldn't get enough of them. The hairspray that'll make it all through her day. But then, Mario, a chemist from Mexico, worked out that maybe they weren't so wonderful after all. He predicted that the Earth's natural sun shield, the ozone layer, was being eaten by CFCs at a terrifying rate. We felt a great responsibility to actually warn society that something could happen. Chemical companies didn't like the sound of his warning. His research threatened a billion dollar industry. Destroying a perfectly good and useful product is absolutely wrong. So they rushed to question his work. But the scientists fought back. All eyes turned to the ozone layer. And then to this guy. Sure enough, there was an enormous hole in the stratosphere and Jonathan Shanklin had found it. It was such a shocking revelation. Over half the ozone layer destroyed above Antarctica in a decade. If the destruction wasn't stopped, we'd be fried by the sun's rays. Oh, that's hot. It's a big problem. We'll have a blind, burnt population. We might have to become nocturnal in order to escape. The US needed a leader to stand up to industry and ban CFCs. Trust me. But they were out of luck. Ronald Reagan's record on the environment uh, left a lot to be desired. His appointments at EPA ranged from incompetent to simply pro-industry. So environmental lawyers, economists, and scientists built an argument so strong that the president simply couldn't ignore it. We pretty much backed him into a corner. And this guy had the president's ear. I was Secretary of State for President Reagan. They talked it over. We talked it over. And Ronnie, who had skin cancer on his nose... Stay out of the sun. ...understood the threat from the sun's radiation. He became convinced it would be a catastrophe. So, in 1987, with America leading the way, more than 30 countries agreed to phase out the production of CFCs and signed the Montreal Protocol. It was done in Montreal, so it's called the Montreal Protocol. But two years later, the agreement was faltering. Poorer countries couldn't afford the greener alternatives. So Maggie stepped up. She pushed the rich nations to help pay for every country to move beyond CFCs. We carried common burdens, faced common problems, and must respond with common action. It worked. With CFCs now banned, the ozone hole is healing. Humanity saved. And Mario won the Nobel Prize for chemistry. But today, a new disaster movie is unfolding. Global warming. The lead actors have changed, but the drama's the same. Life on Earth is again in danger. If today's leaders learn from Ronnie and Maggie and phase out the chemicals causing the damage, there's still time for a happy ending.